All right, guys, welcome back. Um, hoping this mic is working again. This is gonna be an ongoing thing, I think, until I get a better mic. Um, as you can see, it's Explorer Day here. The, uh, the black one over here is the uh, instrument cluster we're waiting for now. I just placed the order today, back from the holidays, and um, we buttoned it up for the water leak. So uh, next, we're gonna move on. I'm gonna show you. We've got a, this is an 08. This one here is an 06. And uh, this one here, this truck may look familiar to you guys. You may have seen it in my other video where it was towed in for a no start. This is a friend of mine. Uh, yeah, that was, this was the vehicle that was towed in for a no start. And uh, we used a thermal ca uh, camera to find a um, short to ground. In any case, it's not back for the same thing. So what it is back for is a coolant leak. Uh, if you can look down there, you'll see that it's all wet. And uh, it is the already check that so what I'm going to do is I want to show you the procedure here to change a pump on one of these if you haven't done it already first things first we're going to crawl under it and set you guys up over here put the camera here so or the light here rather so you can see what I see right here this is your pet cock I'm just going to grab this with a pair of pliers. I couldn't. I can't do it by hand. And I'm going to turn it counterclockwise. These are plastic, and I mean normally they don't break. Can they break though? Absolutely. And they will twist out. Okay, you kind of turn it and pull out a little bit, like that. I'll take the cap off. And we'll just uh, begin to let it drain here, so we get the level down on the antifreeze, and uh, you can start taking it apart up top now. I like to use a, uh, I like to use a tray, a magnetic tray for bolts, and such. Put it somewhere that's magnetic; it helps. Uh, then I'm going to start by. Just doing the obvious, you're taking things out of the way, which is going to be this bottle, fan, hose, all that sort of sort of thing. And in the meantime, we're going to be draining stuff from the bottom, so uh, we could still get something done. Pop this hose off, uh, whatever comes easier, that side, and lift straight up. And as you can see here, it locks, it, uh, it has a uh, point here where it's gonna go in when you put it back. And I'll just lay this off to the side so we don't make a mess. I'll probably drop that later though, and we can make a mess then. Um, next thing is there are uh, bolts on the shroud. Let me see if I can get a shot for you guys. There are bolts here on both sides. We're going to take those bolts out. Okay, there's one. And I'm going to take this off as well, just to get it out of my way. Power steering reservoir. Same thing, just lay it. Uh, now I can get access easily to this other bolt for the shroud, and I'm just going to yank that out. Okay. The hose, I need pliers. Or did I bring them? Actually, I have pliers here. Well, I had, I don't know what I did with them. We'll just use these guys. For the record, guys, I don't know if any of you guys use these, these Nipex pliers, these Cobra pliers. These things are fantastic. Come in different sizes. And um, they work real well for this sort of thing, as you can see. I, I do have a tool specifically made for these pliers, but uh, for these clamps, rather. But, uh, you know, for something like this, I don't need them. So, just going to do that. 
lay the hose off to the side and this will now make a liar out of me. There we go. This will slide right out, nice and easy. With the shroud out of the way, obviously you can see we have a lot more room to do what we need to do here. Okay, the water pump is behind here, obviously on the uh, is behind the uh, fan, so all this stuff is going to come off to get out of the way. And um, first thing we're going to do is it looks like somebody was in here with an air hammer. I didn't work on this before. Um, I'm going to show you guys what I'm talking about. See, when you don't have the right tools, what you do is you go in with an air hammer like that and you destroy everything. It's really sh shoddy work. Haha, <laughs> I caught myself. Um, okay, so we're going to actually use the right tools. And we're going to take that off. And uh, I'm going to unplug this here. Can't quite grab the, the release. What you can do actually is you can once you disconnect this, you can roll this over, okay, that way, so it's out of the way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a special tool set that I can get in here. I just want to check my wrench size, which is this one. I don't think I'm going to be able to break this loose with just uh, no. Okay, some of these are left-hand threads. I don't remember on these. I don't think these are. But that's one part. You grab the other part of the tool. I'll show you. Let me see if I can show you. This is kind of a rough view, guys. I'll show you once I get this thing on. Uh, it's kind of hard to film this. the tool in position here and as you can see I'm holding the pulley by the bolts I think you can see that okay the other side of it I'm gonna grab it with the wrench here and I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna break it loose once you initially break it you can turn these off okay, by hand gently take the fan out of the way and put it with your other stuff that you've removed from the vehicle so we have everything disconnected I want to see, let me see if I can reposition you guys to a, a better view here, maybe. It's kind of hard to put the camera here and work though, but I'm going to try for your benefit to do that. You're going to be in my way, but we're going to try to work around that. I do not have a 3 it's electric ratchet, so I'm going to use a... Wow, those things are tight. So what I'm going to do is again, I'm going to use the same tool here see if I can't hold just get it on the right way it helps all right man those things are tight okay so all I'm doing here is using a 3 8 ratchet and I'm gonna pull up very simple I'm gonna pop my belt off like that See if he wants to change this belt actually while it's off, being that it's all soaked with antifreeze. Put this with the rest of the parts in case he wants to use it again. And now we're just going to reach in here and take these bolts out. Get this pulley out of my way. Okay, so I got this out. Uh, I don't know, I don't know whether or not you guys like the videos on the diagnostic stuff or the videos on uh, things like this, which I don't do a whole lot of on camera, but I'm by myself today, it's quiet, uh, my partner's out, I, st he's, I told him I was going to put him on film and he suddenly got sick and went home, so uh, then this came in, so I figured I would, I would do this uh, for you guys, it's, it's, uh, it's something. Uh, different, you know, it's a mechanical failure or repair, or whatever you here. want to call it. This clamp has to also come off the pump. Now, I'm still letting water drain out of here and, and freeze. 
I don't have, I'm trying to reach over the camera. I'm just gonna pop this hose off. Okay, and slide it down. And another trick to trip that tip, can't talk anymore, little tip is even with those things, if you spray the outside of the hose like that with some, with some kind of lubricant, it'll help you to slide the hoses down because they get stuck on the rubber. So it'll slide right off most of the time. I'm not gonna pull that hose off yet though because I still have water or antifreeze draining. So I don't wanna make too much of a mess if I can help and it. I'm gonna get in here and I'm gonna take these bolts out of the pump, how, the, the pump itself now. Usually you don't have much to worry about with these. They don't make like the old uh, five liters used to. If you guys have ever been there where they, uh, they snap, these usually come right out. Uh, without without any real issue at all, so you can see I can break them loose. They're not that tight with the uh, with the quarter inch uh, uh, electric gun. Let's take this bracket out of the way here. Hang on. Let me have enough room. You just take a look. Yes, I do. Okay. What you got to do is you have to take that bracket out. I forget. I forgot. Uh, and just move this so you can pull this back a little bit. Then you can get in there. It's a little tight, but you can get in there without taking it all off. So, uh, just a, a little, little tip, tip, tip. Okay. So as you can see, it does come right out. Just when you're putting it back in, be careful you don't cross thread it. Uh, we're not going to run them in with air tools though, right? Or electric tools, we're going to start them by hand. Okay. Again, sorry for the view, I don't know how good it is. I'm trying to get you guys the best view I can with what I have here without getting you completely in my way. But this is the best I can do. Right now, all I'm doing is dropping my tools and pulling the bolts out, which is what you should do. Just go around the pump. There's nothing really here to be intimidated about taking this apart. Uh, for the guys that are at home, the only thing you have to be careful of is the is the uh, components on the fan. You don't want to break that, so just be careful. If you've never done it before, take your time, and like I said, use some common sense not to damage anything. But other than that, it's not anything crazy. This bolt's going to have to be cleaned up, as you can see here. All right, that bolt is going to have to be cleaned, which I will clean all of them, and I will, uh, I will do that on the uh, wire wheel. But first, okay. but it doesn't really matter. It's just and then break stuff. Get that back under there. Uh, the least amount of mess I can make did what I could I would get some speedy dry now remember or let me show you again try to do it this way I'm trying to get you guys in a position where you can see and I can see what I'm doing not always the easiest task again when you're filming wiggle wiggle and uh, look like a dummy hang on or get uh, a little help like here and pry it uh, never mind, it just uh, actually, never mind, it actually fell right out of there. That's either, I thought it was going to be tighter. As you can see, there's no lip on here, but you can see um, the green. And what I'll do is I'll take the new gasket. I like to look at the new gaskets. Just look them over quick for any pinch marks, anything that's crushed, uh, nicks, damage. I know it sounds silly, but trust me, I have I've had them out of the box uh, where they're split, okay, or damaged, so... If you have a damaged gasket, you know, go to your parts store, tell them that the, that the thing came damaged in the box and you need another one. Don't put a bad gasket on the truck and don't just smear it with silicone and seal it that way because you're looking for trouble and that's not the way to do it. So simply use a little glue. I like using this stuff. It's uh, like emblemative. It's um, very sticky. And things I mean there's you know all different ways you don't have to put this on if you don't want to 
You don't have to, you know, you can just slap the gasket on and put it together, that's fine. Whatever you like. I prefer doing this. I've been doing it for 25 years this way, and I've never had one leak. Um, never had a problem, so I stick with things that I know work. And uh, just, you know, we all have our methods, like I said, so um, I have guys that throw silicone on it and put it together, you know, whatever, whatever works for you, whatever makes you happy. This is my way of doing it because what I do is I press down on the gaskets, all the way the poles are all lined up properly, that should again be common sense. My gasket's on, it's going to sit on the side. I'm going to pinch. I like to use a razor blade. I'm just showing you here what you can do. You can get a razor blade down here and try to just find the seam on the gasket. And again, this is more time consuming, you know what I mean, than just simply grabbing a disc and cutting it, you know, and, and ripping it down or whatever. But I like to I like to find the seam on the gasket like this not a seam, but a, an area that I can just cut into and get a piece of it started, okay? And try to work it a little bit and see if sometimes with these they'll come off if you can get them started in one piece. Okay, so now that I have everything clean to my liking here, I'm gonna reach down with some brake cleaner and I'm gonna go over the areas here with brake cleaner and a rag and make sure that everything is nice and clean. I don't want to get any debris. Okay. And what I like to do afterwards is I look with a light at different angles. Just because you can, I, you know, you can absolutely have a piece of gasket on here and not see it. Which I do. And I will run uh, my finger over it and look from different angles. And it's very, very, it's a, it's a light piece. It's not an entire piece of gasket, but it's a very small film of gasket that's still stuck in one little area. And I will keep this thing smooth on here, this carbide scraper, and just go over it a couple of times and make sure that when I run my finger back over it, that it's nice and smooth, okay? You will feel the little, your fingers are extremely sensitive, guys. You will feel the little hump in there that's caused by the tiny piece of gasket, okay? And you will sometimes not even see it. The brake cleaner will help to bring it up. Looking at it, looking from different angles with a light will help you to bring it up. I'm just showing you techniques here that you can use if you're not familiar with doing this stuff or if you've ever put a gasket on and had a leak and not realized why when you change the gasket, it may be because of something like this. You did not have the surface area clean enough, okay? Um, so looking from a different angle with the light and spraying it with either, believe it or not, carburetor spray or brake cleaner, you will actually be able to see the gasket. You, you, it will change, it'll, it'll be a different type of uh, tone, the color, than the aluminum, than the clean aluminum will be. So you'll pick it up when you spray it with the light on there. So there's another little piece. And this is not, this is not anything to worry about really, but with stuff like this, it makes the difference sometimes between having a leak or not having a leak. Okay, I've already checked the surface on the top and she's good, but I did the bottom part. I wanted to check on camera so I can show you what I was talking about. Um, you know, and again, I'm, I'm just holding this flat on here and running it over the surface to make sure it runs smooth. And these are all little techniques you pick up and things you can do to just make sure you don't have a piece of gasket stuck on there okay now I'm happy with that so now at this uh, this time we're gonna, we're gonna just wipe this down one more time I like to keep it maybe I go overboard I don't know uh, I don't care if people say I do I'd rather go overboard than not do it right a hundred percent so that's fine uh, I like to make sure that the surface area is completely clean of any kind of debris and it makes me it makes me feel better so if you don't want to go the extra step don't the extra mile whatever you want to call it I like to and I like to be very sure that when I put the thing back together I'm not going to have an issue stay 
all I'm doing is putting a very light film okay like this with my fingertip and just running it around the edges of the gasket to where like I said if there's an imperfection it will it will oh, it seal it okay best I can do fellas I'm gonna I'm going to simply go back in here Hello, Joe's. Yeah, it's fine, Timmy. No problem. You got it. Yeah, you got it, pal. All right, bye. Get a bolt started. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use my socket, my extension, to help me here to get these other bolts in position. So, next thing we're gonna put back here is the uh, pulley. So I like to clean these up on the inside a little bit, just uh, go over them real quick with a, with a wheel. And uh, if there's any freeze on around, you know, on the pulley or whatever, just make sure everything's clean. Go over those again after we get the felt on, just to make sure they're tight. Um, if you don't feel comfortable, you could always put a drop of blue Loctite or something on those things, but I don't, you don't really need it on these. Um, okay, so now that you've got everything here back in uh, where it's supposed to be, the next thing you can do is, well, you can grab your, uh, grab your fan. And just for the record, guys, when you have these fans out, you should always take a look at the blades on them. And just uh, be careful that you don't have any um, you don't have any cracks or anything in them. They do crack. I've seen it. I'm sure, a lot of you guys have seen it as well. The other thing that I forgot to mention is uh, you should take this off. Fred protector. Make sure you take that off. You're gonna put the fan on with that on. Assembly. And the same thing here, you're going to just back in. What you can do is you can just uh, line it up and start turning the pulley. Okay. It's an easy way, to, easy way to do it. Just to get it going here. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to tighten it in the same way that we loosened it before, which is I'm going to grab my uh, my tool here.
seem to be putting this camera right where I need to work. <laughs> and pretty consistently too, so. Uh, Make sure you get this tight. And be careful you don't slip and uh, with this because if you slip, it's gonna hurt. So make sure you got a good bite on it. And you tighten her up. And guys, this tool kit that I have here for this uh, for this fan, I think it's only like. Uh, 30 bucks or something if you buy it from like Lyle all those companies they're not that expensive don't use an air chisel to take this off it's uh it's not smart I'm just gonna pop the connector back on the fan here make sure it's it's seated in all the way um, this is gonna go back I have the bolt I have the bolt sitting here for this. This will go back in here where it belongs. I'm just gonna start that and uh, find my ratchet here. I'll run this guy back in. Okay, so the belt is back in position here. What I like to do is I like to actually sneak this under here first. Okay, so I don't risk damaging the connector here or anything for the fan for the fan. And at that point I can get my ratchet. Wherever you're using your ratchet, your breaker bar, whatever you prefer, you just push the tensioner back. Get this guy back in position. It goes easy. It's not a. It's not a hard to do. Um, then just check over the belt to make sure it's seated on everything. Okay, it's in the grooves. Once you got that done, now you can. Uh, now you can move on to your your shroud, the top of your shroud. Put it back. Give it a, kit, a quick wipe down here. And you got wrap in there. And again, this guy. I'm gonna move you guys over now so you can see. Hope you can see. This guy here, you see these tabs are just gonna pop in. And it does just snap in, really. Um, but when it snaps in, Make sure it's in on both sides, and then grab your bolts. Your two 10, uh, 10 millimeter heads here. Um, next thing is the hose, upper hose. Grab this guy. This is all. Common sense here, right? Just pops back. Same way it came off. Nothing, um, nothing difficult. I'll show you to uh, I was saying before, spray a little uh, lube here on the hose. And it really helps the uh, it really helps to not uh, bind up on the rubber. Okay, so now our hose is back on, our clamps are on. There's something I'm forgetting. I'm just kidding, guys, I'm not forgetting. Remember, this uh, slides in. I'll show you. Let's see if we can get a view. I'll show you. Okay. 
show you guys. If you look right down here, there's a black tab. This has to slide inside of that. This goes in here. This. And that's it. Slides in. Simple. One hose, one uh, here, one here. All right, we're gonna grab our power steering. Same thing here. We've got a uh, tab sits inside the shroud. Here, last bolt. Put this guy back. Run in your other two. Points. Nice and tight. Put the uh, put your hose back on. That's good. Plug in your fan. Don't forget that on the other end. And last thing. Okay. My funnel. What I like to do, anytime I do this, is this. I pop a rag in there that's clean, just like that. Take my antifreeze, start to put it in. Rag will catch any kind of crap that's in the bucket. If you didn't, uh, or anything that may have been in the antifreeze, you never know what's going to come out. Um, that's really the way I like to do it. These funnels are obviously fantastic, uh, work very well. And basically all that's left here is to um, finish this and then bleed it, run it, make sure the uh, heat works. What I like to do with these is turn the heat on, full blast, start it up, let it run a few minutes with the heat on, um, and kind of gauge it from there. Uh, these usually don't, these are not bad with uh, air or anything like that, so, uh, but that's what I do with them. I run them, I always make sure the heat works, it's a good practice because, uh, if you have air in it, the heat may not work, right? You're going to have an angry customer, so just be mindful of that. But that's where we're going to go now. We're going to, uh, we're going to finish it up, uh, get the air out of it, run it, and um, it'll be on its way. Check it for leaks, obviously, as well. And that'll be that. So thanks, guys, for watching. I hope it helps somebody uh, that wants to do their own water pump uh, on a 4.0 single overhead cam explorer or any truck for that matter. So that's it, okay? Thanks, fellas. Have a good day.